guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about some recent five star reads. Before I get into the video, I wanted to take a moment to address some of the things that are happening right now in the world. I'm sure you have all seen the horrific and heartbreaking video of George Floyd and his murder. When I saw the video, I was completely outraged. Since then, I have been taking the time to educate myself on how I can become a better ally. I have been signing petitions and donating, and I have been really trying to educate myself. And down below in the description box, I will link all of the different links for places that you can sign petitions, donate, ways that you can help out, some educational resources that I have personally been reading and trying to learn from, as well as some of my very favorite black content creators. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you subscribe to them, that you watch their channels. We as a society have to do better. And that starts with educating ourselves and learning. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about some books. So I have not done a single wrap up this year, which is pretty odd for me, but for some reason I just, I haven't really been on top of that. However, I've been reading some really, really great books this year and I wanted to talk about them in a video. So. I have 10 books to share with you, all between four and five stars. One of them is my favorite book that I have read this year and I believe is going to be my favorite book of the year. So I'm really, really, really excited to talk to you guys about that. So let's go ahead and start with the two middle grades. The first middle grade I wanna talk about is The House with Chicken Legs and this is by Sophie Anderson. I believe I read this for a Valentine's Day vlog and I completely fell in love with this book so it's very fitting that I read it then this is one of the most charming and whimsical middle grades that I have read in a very, very, very long time and I highly recommend it. Sophie Anderson in general has just become, I think, a new favorite author. So if you're looking for great new authors, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out Sophie Anderson. This book follows Marinka and Marinka lives with her grandmother who is Baba Yaga and Baba Yaga helps souls pass to the other side. She is training Marinka to become like Baba Yaga. However, Marinka doesn't know if that's what she wants to do with the rest of her life. This book kind of explores their dynamics together as a grandmother and a granddaughter, and we see Marinka make a lot of mistakes. She's trying to find out who she is. She's trying to make friends. It's just a really, really beautiful coming of age novel. I don't know, I just think it's fantastic. I think everyone should read it, especially if you love middle grade. The next middle grade I read, I loved so much. <laughs> and that is The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone. And this is by Jacqueline Moriarty. So this follows Bronte Metalstone and Bronte Metalstone's parents have just passed away. And they have left a will that says that she has to deliver all of these gifts to her aunts. All of her aunts are like these wild and amazing people. Some are pirate hunters, some are magicians, some are sorcerers and they all have these incredible whimsical lives and every single time she visits an aunt, it's a little bit like this magical short story. She is one of my favorite characters that I have read in a very long time and I felt like this entire book was just so full of whimsy and magic. I highly, highly, highly recommend it to anybody who is looking for an adventure story, who wants a little touch of whimsy or magic in their life. I thought that this was incredible. I don't know, I just, I can't rave enough about it. I thought it was really great. Now on to the YA. So we've got one, two, three, four, four YAs here. They were all really fantastic. So let's start first with Laura Ruby's The Bone Gap. So I really, really enjoyed this. This follows Finn who is searching for his friend Rosa. They live in this little town and in this town there are gaps and the gaps lead to other worlds. And so it is believed that Rosa has fallen into a gap and into another world. And that's all I knew going into this and I'm really glad that I didn't know a ton more because I really loved reading this blindly so I'm not going to go too much into the synopsis. There is a lot of symbolism in this particular book for what women go through and with certain aspects that I just I can't tell you about because I don't want to spoil any of the plot. 
This is also a Persephone and Hades retelling, but it's not a romantic version of that. I thought that this was just really well done. There's a lot of magical realism in here. There's a lot of whimsy. There is a lot of just really beautiful, amazing images that I really loved. I really, really loved. I, I think that this is a book that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy, and it was a five-star read for me. The next book that I have here is by A.S. King, and it is my favorite A.S. King that I have read, and that is Still Life with Tornado and I just thought that this was fantastic. So this is about Sarah and Sarah has decided to quit school after an art project basically gone wrong and she is met with different versions of herself. So she sees herself when she is very young and when she is very old and they are all trying to help her through this dark time. Sarah is trying to figure out something that's happening and she has blocked a memory from her past and she kind of has to get help from herself and all of these different versions and ages to help her go through and relive the memory and then basically heal from that trauma. It's really fantastic. I thought that this was so well done. I read this entire thing in a single sitting. I felt like A.S. King really nailed it. The surrealism in this book was complete peak. And if you have not read anything by A.S. King, I think that this is a great one to start with, although it is very sad. Trigger warnings as well for dysfunctional families in general. It's just, re it's really fantastic though. I thought it was beautiful. The next one I have here is Wild Beauty and this is by Anna Marie Macklemore. I love Anna Marie Macklemore. This is my very first book from Anna Marie Macklemore that I've ever read and the writing style that Anna Marie Macklemore really does is peak. It is a 10 out of 10 and while I enjoyed the story of this, by far, my favorite thing was the writing. Anna Marie McLemore can do no wrong and they are a gift to the writing world for sure. So this follows a group of cousins who can all grow flowers as like a special ability and they live basically in the garden of this very large mansion and they tend the gardens. There is a curse set on this family that any boy they fall in love with will die. Then we add a boy to the story and we kind of see uh, what happens from there. It's beautiful. This is peak magical realism in my humble opinion. I felt like Anna Marie McLemore just did such an eloquent job explaining things through symbolism and through the magic of the story. The language in this was so rich and deep and fantastic. Go into this book if you love flowery writing, if you love touches of whimsy, if you wanna be swept off of your feet by the magic. This is just phenomenal. It really truly is and I, I highly, highly recommend it. The next book that I have here is Another Magical Realism and it was absolutely fantastic and that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan and I just truly fell in love with this book. Now, out of all of the books, I would say that this is arguably the saddest that I've read this year. This book really had me crying a lot. At times, I had to put the book down because I was uncontrollably crying. It was very sad, but I thought it was just so beautiful. It was so artistic. It was so well done. It felt like I was reading a work of art, and I really loved the way Emily XR Pan wrote. This follows Lee, and Lee's mother has just committed suicide so big trigger warnings. That is a theme throughout the entire book. Grief is a theme throughout the entire book and it's, it's it's so sad. It's a very sad read. So Lee is convinced that after her mother commits suicide, she has turned into a bird and Lee asks her father to travel to Taiwan to visit her grandparents who don't speak any English. And while she is there, she is trying to connect and find her mother who she is convinced has turned into a bird. The magical realism in this book was phenomenal. The themes that it explored with multicultures and with grief, with sadness mixed in with magic was impeccable. It was completely beautiful and stunning. I highly recommend this to people who love beautiful writing and who are possibly looking for a book with themes of grief, but I will just tell you that it's so incredibly sad. Ooh. 
<laughs> okay, now we are on to the adult books, and we've got four adult books to talk about today. The first one I want to talk about is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire, and this was fantastic. I actually started the year off with reading this, and it was such a good idea because it was a five out of five star, and it was just phenomenal. So this follows Roger and Dodger and they are twins. Their father essentially is trying to turn them into being gods. That's all you know going into it and I don't want to spoil anything else. But yeah, it is fantastic. It's really absolutely phenomenal. I feel like people who love science fiction and fantasy and the blending of those two genres, you're really going to vibe with this book. And people who love sibling dynamics, you're also really going to vibe with this book. I have such a heart for Dodger and Roger. I love them so incredibly much. But the writing of this, just Shauna McGuire is an author who I really get, like I really vibe with their writing style because everything that they do I think is just brilliant. This is a longer book. This book is over 500 pages, but I flew through it in two days because I couldn't put it down. So if you are looking for a science fiction fantasy type book, I highly recommend recommend this one. I thought it was just so good. It was just so lovely to see the sibling dynamics between Roger and Dodger. I just, I really love them a lot. <laughs> The next book I have here is by Riley Sager and it is Lock Every Door. I have been reading a lot of thrillers this year and I have been loving a lot of thrillers this year, which is weird. I am not used to reading and loving thrillers, but I do, I truly do love them. And this was a five out of five star. This was my favorite thriller so far that I've read. I just, oh, I adore it so much. This follows Jules and Jules is basically being an apartment sitter in this fabulous and beautiful Manhattan apartment. But there are several rules. She can't talk to the guests. She has to be there every single night. She can't take any pictures on the inside and post them or anything like that. And she gets paid a lot of money to do this. But this mysterious place seems to have like a lot of secrets in the building. And Jules becomes very uncomfortable. And she is trying to figure out why she can't talk to the other guests. And she realizes that something sinister might be happening. I will say that I did not not see the plot twist at the end coming. I was buddy reading this with two of my best friends and I kept like guessing the ending and I was so wrong, but I love that. I love how original and unique this was. I love the take on it. I loved the like really creepy, I guess like almost haunted house vibes. It was just really phenomenal. I thought it was fantastic. And if you are in the mood for a thriller, I recommend this one uh, very much. <laughs> The next book that I have here is My Dark Vanessa, and this is by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now this is not the type of book that I usually gravitate towards, but I'm so glad that I picked it up because I feel like it is such an important read for people just in today's era. So this follows a girl and her name is Vanessa. And Vanessa is reflecting back on her very first love affair when she was 15. She has always painted this affair as something very romantic and sweet, but the affair was between her as a 15 year old girl and her professor who was like in his 40s, which is gross, it, we don't like that. We don't like that, no, no. It's interesting because the text really delves into how she was manipulated into thinking that this was romantic when obviously we know as the reader it's not romantic if there is an old creepy man who is hitting on a 15 year old. The book explores so many important themes like how we as a society really value youth above basically everything else, sometimes at the expense of the youth. It was just such an interesting exploration. It's a hard book to get through. There was one particular scene that was so hard to get through that it made my stomach turn and I did not want to read anymore. So you have to be really careful when you're reading this because this is not for the faint hearted and this is going to delve into a lot of things. I mean, obviously rape is a huge trigger warning for this book. Do not read this book if you feel uncomfortable with that because there is one scene that is just, in my opinion, really horrific to read. I just, I, I hated it. I hated reading it, but I also felt like it was, it was necessary because it really paints this teacher out to be the gross person that he is. I'm glad I read this. This is really, it's just really important to read. And finally, my very favorite book of the year <laughs> and the book that has made me the most happy 
is the house in the cerulean sea and this is by tj clune and i love this book with my whole entire heart and i think everyone should read this the way i describe this is that this is a middle grade written for adults and it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic so this is about linus and linus is a social worker his job is essentially to make sure that orphans with magical powers are safe in the places that they live and that the orphanages are up to code he is sent on a very super secret mission to this orphanage in the middle of the cerulean sea on an island because the children there might possibly bring the destruction of the world that's kind of the opening and we figure out all about the children we learn and all about the magic systems. It's beautiful. There are so many beautiful tropes of found family. This is LGBTQ+, there's a little bit of a light romance in here, but it's perfect, it's beautiful, it's whimsical, it's lovely, it's, it's impeccable, the writing is incredible. I, I cannot recommend this enough. I think everyone should read this. I actually read this during a very dark, dark time. We had just been hit by a tornado and my entire town and city, like we didn't have power or anything and it was storming every single night for a week and so there was no way to know if we were going to be hit by another tornado and it was just a very scary horrible several days and i picked this book up and i read this by flashlight and this is the thing that got me through probably like one of the scariest things that i've ever gone through in my whole life and i really love this book and I have a personal connection to it because of that experience, but also just because of how beautifully written it was and, and happy and magical, I felt like it gave me magic when I needed it most. And that's why I love books. They can give you magic when you need them the most. At your darkest, when there's no light, they can be your comfort, they can be your light. I, I highly recommend it to everyone. <laughs> Well, there you have it, you guys. Those are 10 five-star books or four and five-star books. I thought that they were all really great. I highly recommend them for you and I hope that you find something in this that you maybe are interested in picking up. What is one five-star book that you've read this year? Please let me know. You know that I'm always down to add things to my Goodreads list. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much. And until next time, you guys, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.